So the big question is this, why do many couples break up while on vacation? Today, I share some practical tips for traveling with your partner. My name is Jenna Wosu and welcome to the Second Chances podcast, a love journey in black and white. Traveling with your significant order or someone that you're seeing or dating exclusively can be a remarkable journey. It could be one filled with new discovery and many, many opportunities to bond. But as David and I discovered during our New Year's trip to Maryland, it can also test your relationship in unexpected ways. I remember a story that my sister had told me a couple of years ago. She had gone on this amazing, amazing trip with this guy she had been seeing and they started to have an argument at the airport. They did not speak throughout the trip on the plane. And by the time they got to the destination, they opted for separate rooms and she eventually left after two days. End of relationship. Wow. So yes, traveling with a partner or someone that you're seeing can, can be a mixed bag of both pleasure and pain. So let me tell you a little bit about my trip. It was an amazing trip, to be honest. Um, I went for business, but Davide did join me after a day. And it was exciting because we went through all the planning, all the things we we're going to do, deciding on what, where to go, who to hang out with, and just trying to balance out each other's preferences. But as with all things in life, Planning is one thing, but when it comes to actually executing, yeah, it could be a little bit um, difficult. So the trip started off with Davide having dinner with me, myself and my cousins. He was meeting my family members, first time ever. And even though it was a little bit nerve wracking because I know how overbearing my family members could be when they start to interrogate, but it actually worked out beautifully well. I think that was really the highlight of the entire uh, vacation. He was able to blend in very easily. It wasn't um, nerve wracking for him at all. It was just a really beautiful experience. You would think that they had known each other for many, many years. So that was really a new step in our relationship where because I don't have any family members here in, in Toronto, in Canada, neither does Davide, but this was the first time that he was getting to meet my family members in person. And it was just a beautiful next level to our relationship. So that was how we started off pretty good. Fast forward to 24 hours later, and then we started to deal with what do we want to do? The weather was cold. I don't like the cold. Davide doesn't mind the cold. He wanted to go to Washington for a tour. He wanted to go to the museum. I'm not a museum person. It was just a lot of back and forth trying to figure out what we were going to do to make sure that both of us were enjoying the vacation because at the end of the day, it was a couple vacation. Eventually, we were able to compromise and really just agree on doing things that we both enjoyed, but it wasn't without its fair share of stress. Another thing that we struggled with was navigating driving. This was Davide's first time driving in Maryland. And for some reason, I hadn't really noticed how difficult it can be to navigate the streets in the in the U.S., and so he was having a tough time really just staying on top of the right turns, the left turns, the roundabouts and all of that stuff. And he missed his way a couple of times. Those are some of my pet peeves because I really don't have patience when it comes to that. But it was a learning opportunity for me to be a bit more patient, to really, really understand and show empathy. Because here was a guy who's never driven in the U.S. before and now having to drive around Washington, D.C., a very, very busy um, city. So it was a test of my patience. And sometimes, yes, maybe I did go, ah, come on. But overall, it was just, I had a lot of empathy. And I was thankful that he chose to do the driving throughout the entire trip. I did not have to drive at all. But again, it was a, it was a bit of a pressure when it came to driving. The last thing that I, I want to touch on is expenses. And even though we had planned out exactly what we were going to do, how much we were going to spend eating out or doing whatever, we had also agreed on how much we we're going to spend when we went to the mall. Huh. So I'm more of a frugal spender. If I have a fixed budget, I would just stick within my budget. I'll be okay with that. But Davide is more of a, we might never see this shirt again, ever again. This is so good. Why not buy it now? It doesn't matter how much it is. And so we had this back and forth at the mall where he wanted to spend way more than we had agreed. And eventually I did let him do it because, again, it's not my call. He can spend his money. It's his money. That's fine. But that could have really ended up 
ugly because for me it's uh discipline discipline is we've set a budget let's just stick to the budget and for him it's like this is an opportunity that we may never come across at least not in the near future so why not just take advantage of that so it was another learning experience for both of us really understanding how we shop even though we've gone shopping many many times but it was just different now because now we're in a different country it's not like in toronto where you can go to the mall go back to the same shop a couple of weeks later and still pick up the stuff this is a different country and i had to kind of think differently well he did make a valid point we're not coming back this way anytime soon and really the 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 style of clothing that we're seeing was way better than the things that we found at home so it was again managing emotions and making sure that we were both considering each other um, in decision making and just allowing people to have a good time because at the end of the day the whole goal of the trip was to have a good time but this this is not our first trip together but again i could see and understand why a lot of couples really stress out it can be traveling or vacationing can be stressful on its own and then having a partner or being with someone who maybe this is your first time traveling together or you just have different preferences when it comes to many things can add a, la- a layer of stress to the relationship and sometimes it might cause people to explode and get angry and lead to fights and even maybe someone staying in a separate hotel room or going home and ending the 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 vacation early so what are some of my tips what are some of the things that i've learned from this experience well i think that now even though we had planned together when it came down to it we had some differences in our preferences so maybe plan a little bit better together to make sure that both parties have their interests covered both of you have agreed on what you want to do together and it's okay to do things separately too you don't have to always be together budgeting i think we need to have a a maybe better conversation around that make sure that you're aware of how much you it is you want to spend you don't want a budget that one person plans to spend five thousand dollars and the other person only spent plans to spend five hundred and now it's like why are you spending so much why are you spending so little so kind of agree and have that conversation ahead of time on how much you both expect to spend on this trip another one is around activities so even though i'm an outdoorsy person but when it's cold i'm indoors i like i really cannot i can't do it i don't like the cold it really affects me and so if you're with someone who likes outdoors make sure that there's a bit of a balance have those conversations before you travel so that you're not there's no resentment you're not having to do things that you don't enjoy or things that would just make you miserable make sure that there's some balance around that vacations can be very stressful honestly and i think one thing i did pretty well i don't know if david recognized or not is really checking in on the other person because here we were in a city where i had a lot of family members around and he had no one it just him even though yes he vibes with everybody and he was able to just fit in like you know just like he's known them all his life but i was constantly checking in just to make sure that he's okay because i wanted him to be comfortable i didn't want a situation where i was just having fun and feeling at home and there this was this guy who's who's like a fish out of water and you know just not having a good time so constantly checking in on your partner and making sure that they're okay is so so good i think uh, another thing that is really really key is make sure that you're enjoying the moment that you're you're capturing memorable periods in the vacation remember it's a vacation you're there to have fun you're there to enjoy yourself make sure that life or activities or the need to visit people or family members or whatever it is those things that you choose to do doesn't rob you of the joy of the vacation make sure that it's not just about oh we went here it's about we're able to 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 build memories we're able to learn more about each other as a couple we're able to compromise we're able to to listen more we're able to to be there for our partner to be supportive to enjoy being around them especially if it's just the two of you it's amazing there's, there's no better bonding period in a strange land it's just the two of you go bond uh, so remember the journey is just as important as the destination make sure that even from when you're packing to the airport which can be very stressful for some people you are completely aware you're, compl- you're constantly staying in the positive and make sure that you have a little bit more patience than maybe you do when you're at home 
for me, I think it was a beautiful experience, um, a beautiful journey. Um, I think it's made us closer. I, I find that every time we travel together, it's very different because we go to different locations and each destination kind of brings out a different part of both of us. And so we're still learning how to navigate these kind of trips and just being around each other 24 seven, because that's what happens when we're on vacation. When we're at home, we have other things. We're busy with work or busy with business or whatever it is that we're doing. But on vacation, it's like, this is it. It's just the two of us all the time, 24 hours a day. And I, I find it beautiful. Um, so just make sure that you're prepared for that. And it's a good way to test if you're compatible with someone. If you can't spend 24 hours a day with them for four days, then ha- maybe forever after is um, it's a very, very long time. So it's just another opportunity for you to learn more about the person, to appreciate the person. And like I said, to really, really build memories that you can cherish with this person. Well, that's my little story about our trip to Maryland, which was a beautiful one. So I'm glad we went and we came back still as a couple, a stronger couple, if I may say so myself. That's it for today. Thank you for listening to the Second Chances podcast, A Love Journey in Black and White. Till next time, sending you love and light. Thank you.